Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Agile IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Sean Spicer. Today, we're going to be talking about crisis communications with Power Apps and Flow, and a little bit about building a business continuity plan for disasters. Um, this will be my last Tech Talk for a while from the office. Um, Agile IT has decided, like many in the industry, to go 100% remote work. I'm going to talk about how we made that happen in five days, um, as well as go over some uh, points that I covered in a blog that we published earlier this week. So, as I mentioned, and you can't get away from it, COVID-19 is everywhere in the news right now, but um, from Tuesday evening until Friday afternoon, we were able to get our entire company working 100% remote. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about how we did that. Um, and to get there, I'm going to start with a blog we published earlier this week. Now, this blog was actually adapted from our own plan and process, but we couldn't let our staff know because this was very much a surprise um, exercise so that we could make sure that our team did have the ability in the event of a true emergency, not that COVID-19 is not, but that um, this being in Southern California, this could have been an earthquake. In Northern California, it could have been fires. In Kansas, it could be tornadoes, floods, hurricanes. We're constantly affected by natural and man-made disasters in this world. And there is always the possibility that your business can be affected, locations can become unreachable, that there is infrastructure outages where maybe there's no internet or electricity at the office and having a distributed workforce where um, the entire group is not affected by a localized incident really does allow your business to continue, um, maybe not business as usual, but business as necessary. Um, so as you're planning a business continuity plan for disasters, you want to start out by asking questions that will let you formulate a plan that's unique and useful to your business. So what will happen if some or all of your locations become inaccessible? Is the company still going to be able to operate? And how long can it run that way? Um, which employees can work from home and which ones have to come in? There are almost always some people who have to work on site, um, except in emergencies. Uh, postpone physical maintenance. Someone might need to come in and reboot computers servers. Others may not be able to work from home for personal logistical reasons. Um, what employees, what will your employees require to do telework? Um, they'll need devices to connect from. Not everybody has a desktop or laptop at home. Data may be on machines that are accessible locally, but not from the cloud. Paper records could be necessary. Um, how much can your employees do given those limitations? Um, how will employees get notification of a of an emergency telework situation? Will it be possible to reach everyone before they're on the road in the morning and coming into the office? Um, how will employees access necessary infrastructure, applications, files? Um, a VPN with accounts for all of them might be necessary to reach on-premise servers. Um, cloud services present less of a problem, but you have to make sure the security restrictions don't prevent them from using the cloud from home. Um, you may have issues with VPN through bandwidth at wherever your servers are hosted. Um, so in that case, you want to set up a split VPN. If your compliance requirements allow you to, um, that is not possible for a number of cybersecurity frameworks, but a split VPN allows your employees to access office applications like Office 365 via a secure non-VPN connection while your location-specific access is granted through a VPN into your servers. Um, how will your customers and business partners reach people? Um, can phone calls be rerouted to their cell phones? If video conferencing is important, is there a way to set it up from people's homes? Or will an alternate such as audio-only conferencing be better? Um, what location-specific issues are there? If one location has to be closed, can workers do their jobs elsewhere at another facility your company may have? Um, perhaps your office workers move into warehousing facilities with spare offices there. Um, can they move needed items from the affected location to an alternate one? Um, what obligations are there? Now, this is not just obligations to your customers and partners, but do you have legal or contractual obligations to keep the place open if possible? Um, what requirements do your local labor laws or any union agreements uh, impose? And you have to take all of these things into account and really document what your answers are. Um, and as you go through this process of documenting, do it as a leadership and a management team. Um, you're gonna have, don't be afraid to come up with crazy ideas like, oh, what happens if that oil refinery blows up? Or um, there's a riot at Chargers Stadium that we really can't get into the office no matter what. Um, emergencies, by definition, 
take you by surprise. Um, so once you've answered these questions, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to run pilot groups. And your pilot groups can be maybe a department, like you send marketing home for a week. <laughs> hey, I'm fine with that. Um, generally, you want your pilot groups to be one or two day exercises. And when the, when the exercise is done, focus on understanding the lessons learned and start to institutionalize them. So if you realize that, oh, well, we did this and at seven hours of work, we realized that two of our employees didn't have their own chargers for their laptops and because those were at work on their desk. Um, start to institutionalize that and spread those lessons learned throughout the entire company. Share the plan. Once the plan has been shared, and you may have to run multiple pilot groups before you're there, but once the company is aware of, okay, you always want to have an extra charger in your backpack, extra batteries for your mouse, have a headset if you need it for making phone calls, um, run an exercise. And this exercise should be a surprise. Um, it should not be, oh, next week, like in five days, we're going to work from home. That doesn't do you any good in an emergency. If there is an earthquake, if there is something that if your office burns down, you're not going to have three days to get everything ready. You're going to have to start working remote right now. Um, thankfully, COVID-19 is an emerging situation. We have time to adapt and plan and move forward into this work from home arrangement. Um, but really, don't let this be your disaster planning. Plan for something that's fast and does take you by surprise. So that exercise, do it, announce it in the evening, and just say, listen, tomorrow the office is closed and off limits. Um, now, don't come out and say, emergency, emergency, uh, without any explanation. It causes uncertainty about exposure, about what's going on, um, and can cause doubts about the seriousness of the situation. Um, the last thing you want is after four or five exercises that something major does happen, and they don't take it seriously. And somebody's like, oh, I can go down to the office and I can pick something up. And well, they can't. Um, so um, out of an overabundance of caution. Um, so due to the success of our exercises in the past, we've decided um, your leadership and management teams need to exude confidence in these situations. Um, when there is a natural disaster, you want your employees to be able to relay certainty to your customers, your clients, and your partners. Even if you don't have certainty, even if nothing is under control, you need to be clear and confident in your internal communications so that that, clear, that clarity and that confidence can be passed down to your clients and your customers. Um, so I'm gonna go into how we did it. So we have been working from home, it's been, a policy here at Agile IT that we hire adults, and if you need to take a morning off, if you need to work remote from the tire shop or the coffee shop, or you need to watch your kids or go to a doctor's appointment, fine, do it, just let us know. Um, we have an all company team, we have a thread that runs every week where people just put in their updates if they're gonna be working from home that day, if they need to leave early, if they need something covered. Um, it's all in one specific thread that everybody replies to, and that thread is updated every week. So we really have the work from home thing on an individual basis down. Um, but we went and we created our plan. Uh, we published this blog, and we've been working for the last few weeks on reminding people, take your surfaces home, take your chargers home, make sure you have everything you need to work from home in case something happens, either personally or to the area. Um, and on Tuesday night at 7.30, we announced, or the, the leadership team announced to our management team that we were going to be moving forward with the exercise. Um, five minutes after the leadership made the decision to do this uh, at more early than we thought, we thought we were gonna do it about a week away, um, we notified the management team. Within 10 minutes, the management team all confirmed that they were aware of the situation. Then from that point, we went and we notified the entire company with an urgent update in our all company team channel. Um, within 30 minutes, 90% of the entire company had acknowledged. We had reached out as our management teams had reached out to their individual teams in order to make sure everybody was aware because we didn't want people accidentally coming to the office because they didn't check teams on their off time. 
in 30 minutes, 90% of the company had acknowledged through Teams. There were no phone calls necessary, no text messages. And in one hour, 100% of the company was aware um, and we were ready to go. Um, managers set up 8 a.m. triage calls that morning. The triage calls had a dual purpose. One, to check in with the Teams and see, do you have your charger? Is there anything you need um, that's going to impede your workday? But by placing the call in Teams, we were also able to make sure that our employees had the ability to take and make calls. They had all of the audio equipment necessary in order to do that. Um, and the call quality was good. And since we are a very um, customer facing business, every person in this company has some customer touch points. Um, this was critical. Um, within Teams, we were also sharing lessons learned. Um, so, great point made by one of our project managers at one of those triage calls that spread out through the entire company. If you have in-person meetings, make sure to convert them to Teams meetings now. You don't want to do that two minutes before um, two minutes before a meeting because you didn't remember. And I'll admit, I had two in-person meetings that I had to convert over. Um, and during the day, it was business as usual. Um, we actually worked faster. So one story that I like from the day is we had a um, new prospect contact us. He wanted to transfer his licenses from an existing GCC high vendor to us. Well, we haven't we haven't transferred licenses before. So he, uh, my sales guy said, "Hey, I need to I need to talk about this." Okay, we just hit the call button in Teams and we were talking. Well. Okay, now that I know the situation, we need to bring our, in our licensing expert for AOSG. Let's one more click, and we're on the phone with Sierra. And Sierra was able to answer our questions. Um, she was going to need to reach out to Microsoft. He was able to provide the tenant IDs and all of the information there through Teams chat. And we were off the phone in less time than it took me to just explain what we did. Um, normally, this would be I would walk over to his office, and we would walk over to her office, then we'd walk back to my office, and then we'd get back to work about 10, 15 minutes later. Um, this took a matter of about two minutes for us to move through this, and this is the same situation that we heard from everybody. Um, the end results of this exercise was everybody working from home. Um, I put out the call, that's me there with the umbrella. I love to work outside. Um, I said, hey, listen guys, let's share the pictures of our modern workplaces, what are we up to? Um, if you've been to our website, you know that we are very proud of the Dogs of Agile IT. Um, it's a little bit like, um, where's Waldo to find Luke in there? He's hiding between the two couches there in the second picture. Uh, Luke, uh, or I'm sorry, Logan, uh, who is part of our productivity team, he's in the office all the time, uh, for the day was a productivity specialist. Um, but we had a lot of fun with this, and one of the reasons for having fun is when you're working in an office environment and you're having face-to-face -face communications, it's very easy to share the nuance of emotion, and there's a connection, whereas when you're working remotely, it, everything is text-based, you're getting on calls, things are very much to the point, you don't have those casual conversations over the coffee maker, it, it's really easy to feel isolated and by making it fun and sharing these pictures and having fun conversations um, we were able to keep everything uh, moving in a friendly way in a real emergency this will be critical because it will give a sense of normalcy um, so at noon that day we announced all right everybody this has been an exercise you've done great the office is open tomorrow um, keep on working today and we'll see you in the office tomorrow um, given the success of the exercise, given that most of our partners, um, a lot of big tech companies, Microsoft, Google, Apple, are all moving to fully remote workforces right now in order to flatten the curve, to not stop the spread of COVID-19, but to reduce the speed at which, so that our hospitals don't get overloaded, our infrastructure doesn't get overloaded. And by remote working, we're doing our part for that. Um, and so on Thursday, in light of everything changing, um, and one of our younger employees goes to a local community college here, the community college put out notification that they would be closing um, for uh, starting with spring break next week, um, and that a student had been in contact with somebody. So we have zero exposure in the office, but we decided, you know what, the exercise did great, let's go ahead and announce it, and say next week, 
we will go 100% remote. So we are here in the office today on Friday. Um, our employees have been told, listen, if you need monitors, if you need docks, chargers, go ahead, let's get those signed out, take those home. Let's make sure you have everything you need um, to work from home, not just next week, but we'll reevaluate the situation on Friday. And this may be one week, two weeks, three weeks. Um, who knows? Maybe we become an entirely remote company. I wouldn't like it. I don't think any of the employees here would like it. We really do like working together. Um, we love our office. We love the location. Um, but we're also happy to work from home. Um, and you can see we have some pretty nice workspaces there. Um, so today what I'm going to be going over is a crisis communications tool that Microsoft put together at the beginning of the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, I believe it came out last week. They are currently on version two of it. And this leverages Power Apps, Flow, Power BI, and Teams in order to create a very clear channel of communications and a central repository for information that's necessary um, in a crisis situation. Um, so you can get the instructions for it here. I will go ahead and share this link in our YouTube description, as well as in the blog that I'll be writing about this. Um, and this covers everything about setting up the app, and I'm gonna walk you guys through that. Um, you will need um, a Power Apps license. Um, however, right now, Microsoft has made Power Apps free for everybody during the period of this outbreak. Um, the prerequisite, uh, before we get started, we'll need to download this crisis communications package from GitHub. I've gone ahead and done that already, um, so we don't need to do it here. Um, that is linked down here in um, the documentation, but right now we're going to get started. Now, like all Tech Talks, I am doing this in a completely new CIE environment, so there's a little bit of data in there, but you're going to notice as I go through, there's going to be a lot of pop-ups um, welcome me to, me to Office 365, but there's also going to be some times where things have to upload and there will be delays and pauses um, on the screen. So to get started, um, our first step is going to be, <clears throat> pardon me, get our SharePoint uh, site set up. And let's go ahead and open all ops because we're going to need these. But first we go to SharePoint. Now we need a place for all of this information to be shared. So we're going to want to create a team site. Now you don't want to create a private site because you do want the entire company to have it. And we'll just go up here and create site. <clears throat> and here you have communication site or team site. We're going to create a team site. We're going to call this crisis communications. Automatically going to create that email address, site description, central crisis community. Oops, I misspelled that. Now we want to make sure that the privacy settings are public. And for this case, we're going to go ahead and keep the site in English. So add additional owners, none. And if I recall, we can't add everyone from here. No. So we will go ahead and add those as we build the app. So we go ahead and finish. Now what we're going to do, and I'm going to be very mindful during this to close tabs. We're going to wind up with a lot of tabs opening up as we do this. Um, but we will be coming back to this SharePoint site over and over again. Now what we want to do is we want to create the lists that are necessary in order to manage the app. And this is where the data is actually going to live for the various functions of the application. Um, in order to create those lists, we're going to use Power Automate, um, the platform formerly known as Flow. We go over here to My Flows. Okay, I guess I'm gonna load. We go to My Flows. Then up here, we're going to go ahead and import. We've got that zip file that we've extracted already. Um, we're going to upload from that. Oops, I need to go to Downloads. There we go. 
and we have deploy SP lists. That's for deploying the SharePoint lists. It's going to upload. Once it uploads, it's going to have the dependencies pop up down here below, and we're going to be able to go ahead and make some settings. During that point, we're going to need to create new connections. In your environment, you may already have those connections. Um, so as we go through this, and whenever you import a package in Power Automate, you want to pay really close attention to this import setup. Um, and when we create as new, it's going to have that resource name already there, but you still have to click create as new and save it. And then you're going to have this black text underneath that indicates that that field has been set. Now we're going to set up our um, SharePoint connection. Because we don't have it yet, we just click create new. See all these tabs. <laughs> So now we're going to create a connection. SharePoint's right here on top. That's easy. We want to go ahead and connect directly. If you have a more complex infrastructure with an on-premises data gateway, you can go ahead and select that as well. Um, that also uh, is good for on-premise SharePoint. Um, I'm using this entirely as an admin. I don't recommend setting up this application as an admin. Um, it should be safe, but I don't like using admin accounts for anything automated like this. Uh, because it does create a potential cybersecurity problem. Um, so that's been connected. I'm going to go ahead and close. Now we refresh the list. It's there. Click save. Now, again, before I click import, I'm going to check. We've got both of our fields filled here. Um, if you import and those aren't there, you're going to have to import again. And what this will do is it will sometimes create duplicate sites and lists. So we don't want that to happen. So importing your package, don't navigate away. Um, now, of course, you can go and do something else. It's like installing Windows 95. You're gonna wanna go and get a cup of coffee, drink the cup of coffee, swap the disk. Um, but this really only takes usually about 30 to 45 seconds. All right, the flow has been created successfully. Run the flow to make sure it's working. We don't wanna do that yet. Um, so now that we've got the flow, we're going to want to go ahead and edit the flow. Um, now, when we go back here to my flows, it says we don't have one. Refresh. And there it is. So now we go over here to edit. I'm going to go ahead and close these extra tabs here. All right. So if you haven't used flow before, this is a very linear flow. So it's just this happens and this happens and this happens. It's basically a to-do list, but we do need to edit it for our use. So the first thing we need to do is edit the target site. What we'll do for that is we're gonna go back to SharePoint. We're going to go to the crisis communication site that we created. We have the URL up here. So we're going to replace the Microsoft demo information here with our own site that we've created. Go to app name. We can go ahead and keep it named that. And then scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're going to save and commit those changes. It's going to, okay, now it's saved. We're going to go back to my flows and we're going to run this now that it knows where to go. So you can see it's going to tell you that it's running as mod administrator. You do need to click that um, the allow uh, location data or this will not run. Um, and it can be really confusing if you're on a fast connection because you'll click continue. You'll get a little red error up here and it will go away. Um, so you won't know what's going on. Um, if you are doing this in an in private uh, browser, there can be issues. Um, I discovered that yesterday trying to do this in Edge. Um, I have tested and know that this will work in Chrome. So the flow just takes a few seconds. It's gone ahead and created a bunch of lists over there in SharePoint that we'll see here in a minute. Um, sometimes it will ask you to log in. Um, so what this has done is this has created lists for logo uh, assets, um, the admin setup, contacts, company news, and FAQ, useful links, um, employee tracking, and then helpful hints. And you'll see each of these in the end user application. Um, as you're working with things, do not delete the list. Um, and I'll show you how to manage deleting data. Um, however, there will be dependencies created as the application runs um, that you can break if you delete things. So we don't wanna do that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Power Apps and we're gonna create our application. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close these out. 
Um, they will be open again shortly. Now we go over to Power Apps. And we're all set here. Now we want to go to Apps. And now you can't do that from Create Apps because you're going to want to import. So we're going to import Canvas app. And now the import that we're going to be doing is Crisis Communication. This one here. Now you notice that there is Crisis Communication GCC. The reason for that is that you're um, on Microsoft.com tenants. If you're in GCC or GCC High, that will be on Microsoft.us. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using the right one. Um, we're just going to do this here. It's going to go ahead and upload. I do not need a Power Apps expert right now. And again, this generally just takes about 30 to 40 seconds to upload. All right, there we go. Now, again, review package content. We're going to want to go down this column and crisis communication. We're going to just give a, give a new name. So the resource name is going to be crisis communication. Import setup. So this is a flow we want to create. Set up, create is new. It's just going to be called Crisis Communication Request. We're going to save. Again, I do not need services or experts. Um, so the Microsoft Teams connection, we're going to have to create that as new as well. We'll just search for it up here. I don't feel like scrolling today. There we go. It's going to ask who I want to log in as. We're going to create the connector. We're going to be mod admin. All right. One thing about working from home is I won't have noisy employees standing right outside my window laughing. Um, it's a joyous sound, though. All right. So these are connected. We're going to go ahead and go back to Power Apps, refresh list. There it is. Click save. Now we've got the Office 365 Users Connection and Outlook Connection. I'm going to go ahead and add both of these in one step to save some time. Again, I'm telling you these tabs will get confusing. New Connection, Search, Outlook, Create. Didn't time out this time. So that's been created. And again, we've got to do the Users Connection. So new connection, search, up 365 users, create. Mod administrator. All right, now all of our connections that we need are there. We're gonna go ahead, refresh list, save. Select an import. It's already there because we've just created it. Save. Again, just double check down this column. Everything is set, and we're going to go ahead and import that app. Again, this does not take that long. We do. We don't want to navigate away because there are steps that you will miss if you do this. Um, all right, all package resources were successfully imported. Now we're going to go back to the main app screen. Here is the app as it's been created. It is not ready to run yet. We need to go again and edit some things in order to um, get rid of those Microsoft defaults um, and put in our own. Now, depending on your environment um, or how long you're taking to do this, there may be some places where you need to sign in and re-validate. Uh, yep. Um, so we, RSS, we need to sign in. Okay, we're signed in. Everything is set up. Um, you may want to double check that the your links are all with the same user. That is necessary. We're going to go ahead and allow. I do not need instructions today. All right, nice and exciting from here. Um, it's because you do have the rest of the home stuff here. What we need to do now is edit some of our data connections or data sources. Now down here, you've got uh, your SharePoint lists. These are all gonna be linked still to Microsoft SharePoint account. So we need to go through, click the ellipses and remove. 
remove, remove, remove. And let's just get rid of all of these. Make sure you don't go too far. Otherwise you have to set up new connections. Okay, now up here in data sources, we're gonna search for SharePoint. We're already got the connection here. It's already pulling those lists from that channel. Now let's see. Into the SharePoint URL for the location of your list. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and keep your SharePoint tab open. I'm going to go to crisis communication, jump the gun here a little bit. Connect. You'll know that you've connected properly because all of those lists you just deleted, these are the links to the lists that were created when we ran that flow just a minute ago. I'm going to go ahead and connect. And those are all connected. Give me a second here. So now what we're going to do, and I'm going to skip this for right now because I have run into issues with the demo tenant, is that you'll want to enable location updates. What this does is it allows you to look at a Power BI dashboard that will show you the locations of your users. This can be useful in a natural disaster where you can see where people are. Okay, you can't work from home. You're getting evacuated um, or you're in a area affected by floods. Um, so this is very useful in a disaster. Um, and in order to do that, oops, we need to find the button for date range. Whoops. Button, date range. And now when people um, submit an, a request to work from home, I'll show you that feature on the user side of the app. Um, they're going to have this nice menu that they can go ahead and just click the days where they want to work from home. But when they submit, you can go ahead and change the code over here. And the code snippet is available on the Microsoft documentation page. Um, in order to collect the um, in order to collect the location data when it happens. So um, we're going to go ahead and skip editing that, but I did want to show you how to get there. Um, now we're going to go ahead and we are going to update the request help flow. So first what we want to do is we want to create a Teams team. Um, I always laugh when I say that. Um, that is going to be there for the crisis management team. Um, so we're going to do this in the web app. You just go down here, join or create team, create team. We're going to call this, whoops, um, we're going to go ahead and call this private because it is going to be the crisis management team. And we'll go ahead and create it. Now, when people have uh, requests, they're going to come into this channel, um, and you can also set the settings that you want to favorite and follow this channel so that uh, anything that does get um, put in here is added. I'm going to just go ahead and add a make-believe group of, oh, I thought that was a Bruce. Let's do Cameron White. And we'll just say that three of us are members. Um, and I should already be a member because I created it. Yep. So we'll just close here. Now we have our crisis management team. We're going to go over here and we want to get a link to the channel. Um, now they say um, in the documentation to go ahead and put that in a text editor because you got to pull two strings out of it. Um, we're going to go ahead. Oops. I did not want to do that away we're going to copy it now i just use this as my text editor and i don't send it open up the kitchen sink editor so what we're going to need is we're going to need the team id which is everything between the group id and tenant id and we're also going to need the channel id which is everything after channel including that 19 percent there um until the tacd so now we're going to go back to flow. Oops. 
I'm sorry, Power Automate, old habits die hard here. I'm gonna go to my flows. We've got crisis communication request. We're gonna go ahead and edit that. And we're gonna open the team ID card, which is just setting a variable, a variable team ID, it's a string. And let's get that team ID out of Teams. So, the group ID is here. Whoops, I left out that nine. I want to make sure that is all there. Got it. So, put in the value, the channel ID, same thing. Remember to include that 19%. If you work with UTM codes, you're going to sometimes be um, sometimes be tempted to stop that or cut that out. So we're going to copy that, paste it in here. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to convert our time zones. So we are here in San Diego, so we're going to set both of these to Pacific time. We're already set for destination time zone, and we're going to save. And it is saved. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Power Apps. Close that. We'll go back to Power Apps. Okay. And we're going to want to import a new app. So get ready to create, go back to here so and that's just me trying to exit out here we're going to go ahead and import a new app now we're going to upload the admin app crisis communication admin right here again make sure you're not uploading the gcc version open again it will just take a moment to up to upload there we go Again, import setup, we've got the comms, we don't have any related resources for this, so we're gonna go ahead, create as new, crisis communication admin, save, check down there, we've got the black text, all fields necessary are done. We're gonna go ahead and import it. Importing package, don't navigate away. All right, now again, we do not wanna run it. We wanna go back to apps and we need to edit it. And again, this is get those connections set up right. Now it's gonna be accessing those SharePoint lists that we uh, also configured for the end user application. So we're gonna to have to remove the Microsoft ones and add our own. And the process is almost identical to what we did for the end user application. All right, again, it's just making sure that we have the right permissions. And again, if you've used Power Apps and Flow, these things are going to work faster in your system. It's that this is still new. We do not want to see that again. We're going to skip it. Now we need to go over here to data sources, and we're going to delete these SharePoint lists. Whoops. Yep, that's the right one. Again, go ahead and take your time. You don't want to go pay a wire and click the wrong thing. Um, although it is easy to add back if you know which ones you need to add. Now we're going to add a new connection for SharePoint. We're going to do it in, with Crisis Communications Channel. And again, all those lists already exist in that SharePoint site. So it's just going to pull those right over. Connect. Takes just a second. And they are all right. So there we go. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create the initial um, information uh, that will populate the app. Cancel, file, save, save. Normally I would put in some version information, but since this is the first one, um, there are no changes necessary. It's important to do this if you um, if you do run into problems and you get the error that says socket cannot be open um, or cannot be reached when trying to, app, to get to an app, come back into Power Apps, go to Save, and make sure that you've published. 
So we're going to go ahead and publish this version. That's now available. We don't need to share it since this is a demo tenant. Um, and besides, we don't want to share this anyway because we are going to be um, running this app. We're going to go ahead and close the studio. We have saved. So we're safe. Okay. Now, Crisis Communication Admin, we're just going to click on that and run it. And here's our application. So the first thing we need to do is we do need to set up the admin settings. Um, and there are just a few. Um, admin email, let's go ahead and make that Megan Bowen at Contoso. Um, logo URL, just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Agile IT logo from our website, because that URL is super easy for me to grab. Oops, copy image address. Um, so in order to get the um, Azure Active Directory ID of the group, um, we're gonna need to go ahead and go to Azure Active Directory. Um, Give me just a second, I'm just copying the link from my uh, normal browser. We'll go ahead and do that in the Agile IT window. We're gonna click on the Azure Active Directory. We're gonna go to Groups. And then that is going to be the Crisis Communications Group. Yep, we do not want that to be the crisis management team. So we've got the object ID here, that's what we need. We're gonna go back to the app. Put that in there. The app URL we can get from right here. Go down to details. Whoops. We need the URL for the actual application, not the admin app. So the web link is right here. Copy link address, go back to the app. Put that in here. Um, for the government RSS feed, this can be anything you want it to be. It can be, um, it can be your company blog's RSS feed if you want. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to follow Microsoft's demo example, and we're going to make that the World Health Organization. Notification method, we're going to do that with Teams, and then we want to turn on all of the features. Um, if you do not want some of these features, you can come back here and turn them off, then they will not be available to your users. Um, but in this case, to have a full feature demo, we really do want everything on. After we save, we now have the ability to add information to each of these individual portals. I'm going to make it short and sweet here. We're going to create a new contact. Full name is going to be me. Going to be Sean S. at Composo. Where I'm in the USA. My business phone here in San Diego is information and comments. This will be listed or this will show up in the list. Um, I'm going to be the I'm going to be the in-flight missile repairman. If any of you are former military, I am sure you recognize that. Now, I mentioned earlier that you're not wanting, going to want to delete any of these lists um, because it can break the applications, likewise with the records within them. Um, so if you do need to delete somebody like myself, come in to edit their record and you can go ahead and de uh, deprecate it. So we're going to save. Now you can see I'm here. You can add as many as you want um, and you can sort it down by uh, individual regions um, and you can search. Um, so now we're going to go back. This back button looks a little bit better on a phone, but I'm not going to go through this process in the phone. So company news. We're going to go ahead and create a new post. And in this case, I want to use a cool template for a COVID-19 um, company-wide announcement that I saved. Uh, we do work with uh, Zenefits. And Zenefits put this up yesterday on their blog, and I really liked it. Um, and this is just a HR template email. You definitely want to edit it. Again, um, I will put the URL um, in the description as well as the blog. But here we go. We've got this nice thing. Uh, here are some suggestions. I'm going to use the same text for everything. Um,
save it and skip the blurb because I want to get done with this demo. Now again, you can go back and you can edit these things. If you want to delete it, you can go ahead and deprecate. Um, I don't. I want you to see all this information once we get there. I did not mean to create a new post. I'd like to go back. Now, helpful tips. New tip. Keep your charger in your backpack. Um, resource URL, this is not necessary, but you can go ahead and have that link. I'm going to go ahead in this case, put the link to the Canvas app instructions, just so we have a link in there and you can see how that works. Um, subtitle or else description you want your charger. So when you come in here this time, whoops, it wants to edit, we'll go back. That URL didn't show up. Okay, we will fix that later then. Let's move on. Um, links, these can be links to um, anything. It can be um, your HR platform, Actually, let's have charger ordering form. We can create a form on another tech talk here and have a link to that um, just to throw a URL in here simply. I'm going to do this as well. Um, where to order a charger. Save. We're going to go back and FAQ. I don't, where do I get a charger? Answer from the charger app. Whoops, submission failed. Oh, right. Oops, that has to be numeric. There we go. And we're gonna go back. Now we've filled out a little bit of this for everything. Let's go ahead and clear this. Now what we want to do is we want to go back to Power Apps. We're going to go to Apps. We're going to go to Crisis Communication. And we have not published it yet. Remember I said earlier that you need to make sure to um, save it and publish it prior to um, making it available. Oh, we're going to override because I have it open in one of these other tabs. I told you we're going to have a lot of tabs in this demo. All right, just about there. All right, once it comes up, we're gonna go to file, save, save, and publish. Publish this version. All right, it is successfully published. We're gonna go ahead, go back to Power Apps again, and close all those additional tabs. Yes, we want to leave. I know we were editing it. Now we're going to go ahead and run it just by clicking on it. And again, if you try to do this the first time and you do get that socket error, um, it'll pop up down here in the bottom corner of the screen. Um, and it can sometimes take one or two minutes for it to open up um, if you do have that error. But there we go. It actually worked this time. Um, so hello, Mod. Let others know where you're working. Um, we do have one or two other things we do need to do right now that I forgot about. Um, so right now we're just testing, but now what we want to do is we want to set up the notification flow. Otherwise, um, anything I do in here is not actually going to show up. So import, upload, Crisis communication news notification. And we're going to have some new connections I think we're going to need to do. Okay, so again, we're just create as new, making sure that's in there. Any connections we have, we're going to go ahead and click through and save. So we don't have this one. We're going to need the Power Apps notification. 
new connection, search, Power Apps notification, target application is going to be the uh, end user application, and let's see, we're going to need the app ID. So from there, we're going to go back to Power Apps to get that. And crisis communication, details, web link, copy. Oh, nope, we can actually get it straight from there. Okay, we're going to go back to the flow, target application. Okay, the line break, create. Okay, that's connected. We're going to go ahead and close this out, go back to the flow, refresh list. There it is. Select during import as your AD connection. Going to create new, new connection, Azure AD, there we go, create that connection, it's going to again ask who I am, oh, I need to get my credentials again, give me just a moment here, um, for some reason my environments window keeps closing on me, All right, we're going to go ahead and give those permissions. You know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit this one. Switch account. I'm not sure if this will break things, but I noticed that there was a checkbox I didn't check there. I was moving too quickly. Sign in. Stay signed in, yes. Okay, well, apparently it let me go through without clearing that checkbox. And so let's go back to manager close, refresh list, there it is, save. Select doing import, SharePoint. All right, once again, we're just gonna check down this import setup, make sure everything has a field filled in. And we're going to import again it's going to take 30 to 45 seconds we're going to go ahead and make sure everything is working and make those connections all right all package resources were successfully imported flow has been created run the flow to make sure it's working we're not going to need to do that yet we're going to want to edit it All right, so Power Apps Connector, Team ID, Channel ID, these should already be set. Yep. Where is this? I'm editing the wrong flow. need to refresh there we go notify users on new crisis communication news we're going to go ahead and edit that we're almost done here people um, when a new news item is posted site address we're going to want that SharePoint address again um, let's see up oh, there we go copy that SharePoint URL paste and then we're going to need the list name And that in this case is going to be the, there we go, company news. Get the admin config settings. Again, we're going to take that SharePoint URL and copy it. And then the list name for this one is going to be CI config admin setup. And 
that's there. And the last thing we're going to want to do is we can localize the read more, news update, and app links. Um, these are just, let's go ahead and since that's not in there, we're going to go ahead and save. Okay, it is saved. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this flow. We're gonna go back to the Crisis Communications app. We're gonna go ahead, actually, do we, we have it running, and we're gonna go to make a request. Please watch our next prep talk. Gonna submit. And we go back to Teams. I'll go ahead and get rid of my message here. And there we go. New request. Please watch our next Tech Talk. Now, if I weren't in here, we would have gotten a notification. You can go ahead and uh, change variables in here. You can set these to be urgent, uh, but really just to get it out there and make it easy. Here it is. Um, this application is set up. The last thing I'm going to want to do is let's say that we are having an actual emergency. You probably don't wanna have this up there all the time. It's gonna create some noise, things for people to work through, but we've just decided we are an emergency. We wanna get the crisis tool out there to our entire company. We're gonna to go to our general tab. We're gonna add a tab and that tab is gonna be Power Apps. We're gonna add that connector. It's gonna give us a list of our Power Apps. There we go. We're going to add crisis communication to our main channel. And now everybody can come in here and get to the application right from within Teams. This will also work on their mobile device. Now we're going to go to the crisis management team just to make sure nobody has to remember URLs. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add another tab here for Power Apps. Add. Going to pull that list of all of our applications. Just got to be a little bit patient. We're going to add the crisis communication admin and we're going to save it. And now, if you need to come in here and add any new company news, any updates, FAQs, that's all available to the crisis management team. So you've got your admin app operating here in the crisis management team as well as your crisis communications app here in teams and let's since it's emergency i can't move in front of the defaults but it's up there um so there we go in about half an hour we were able to take this template get it set up within our tenant we now have a clear and concise way to communicate um any sort of crisis communications information faqs policies as well as giving the ability for our employees to ask for help in a way that goes directly to that crisis management team as well as find contacts that may help them in the event of an emergency um, i hope this tech talk has been really helpful i want you all to stay safe out there have a great weekend next week's tech talk will be done from my beautiful backyard well if it's not raining that umbrella does kind of work but it gets cold but i will be working from home with no disruption to our business. Everybody, again, be safe out there. Thank you for joining for joining us for another Tech Talk. Give us a like and follow down below. And if you need any help getting this set up in your organization, if you need any help with Power Apps, Flow, Power BI, feel free to give us a call or reach out to us at agileit.com. Thanks a lot and have a great weekend.